What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real Call Game, whatever you want to call it. Today is my most anticipated episode. I've never been more excited to record one of these episodes than today because the Twitter world and the NBA world is very weird right now. This was supposed to be an episode where I came in and I wanted to talk about the implications of like the virus in the NBA. We've having games be postponed. We have full rosters, um, whether it be catching the virus itself or due to tracking, can't play. And I want to talk about, I wanted to talk about how we might see another suspension, hiatus of the NBA season. I mean, fingers crossed that we don't see that, but it's a real possibility. There's going to be a meeting starting tomorrow and it might be seven days, maybe 14, hopefully not months, but we will see. But instead of talking about that stuff, we have games to talk about and, and more specifically, some things that have been going on on Twitter that I have questions, like genuine questions to the audience here, um, the average NBA fan. Be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe if you are new, if you have no idea. Um, I'm going to give all of my personal opinions about things around here. You may disagree and that is completely okay. We have a very civil community around here. Leave it in the comment section. Instead of talking about the first game of the day, I want to go right into the headline of this one and talk about the Toronto Raptors because as of right now, they are down bad. Uh, with the Washington Wizards winning today and them catching another L, they are what? Is that Does that make them the worst team in NBA record-wise? Obviously, record-wise, they're not the worst team in the NBA. And nobody would have expected that going into the season. We all had them in that upper echelon of Easter Conference teams of like we talk about the top four, top five. They were in that conversations. They brought back Fred Van Vliet, which was a super surprise. I was 100% sure that he was going to go to New York or one of these other places. He comes back. They pretty much bring the same team back other than those two center positions and that would be one of the main reasons why they can't keep up with their production from last year. Marcus Gasol, Serge Bakker are miles ahead of what you get in Alex and Aaron Baines when he was healthy. Luckily for them, uh, Chris Boucher has really come in and, and stepped up. But the last two games, they have lost by one. And losing by one is stressful and it sucks for an NBA fan. And I understand you Raptors fans being down bad right now. I would rather lose by 20 than to lose by one, especially on back-to-back -back nights. So yesterday, when they lost against the, the Warriors... Um, I recorded my reaction to the last possession because, in my opinion, that last possession was well, it was bad. It had Pascal Siakam doing a spin at the top of the key that created no space, and the shot did not go in, and they catch an L. And people, some people on Twitter took that as me being a hater or whatever, but y'all know me around here. I'm going to have constructive criticism about players. I'm going to praise them when they do well. I'm going to have constructive criticism. That's always been the relationship I've had with players in the NBA because why would I not const have constructive criticism after that possession? Now, what makes it worse, right, is today they lose again and the possessions are similar where Pascal gets in an isolation situation, but instead of getting them at the top of the key, he gets it on the lower block, which is probably a better shot for him at the end of the day. He spins, he spins, and he misses a shot. The shot was halfway down and it bounced out and you could not make that up. It was this close to going in and the Raptors lose two games in a row. Now, my tweet today was, you can't make that up. And what I was referring to was the fact that the shot was in the basket and it came out. But Raptors fans being where they are, and I understand being down bad. Again, your team was projected to be pretty good. And right now, y'all are ass. People saw that as me taking shots at Pascal Siakam because my last tweet 24 hours ago was me being constructive. But if you know who I am and been a fan of the things that I do around here, you know that I am a huge Pascal Siakam fan. But being a fan doesn't mean that I can't criticize somebody. Derrick Rose is my favorite player of all time. Go back and watch videos when he was with Chicago. Please. Chris Paul. Oh, you can't see it because Kobe White is over there. Chris Paul is my favorite point guard of all time. Don't ask me how Derrick Rose and Chris Paul. Don't ask me that question. But I'm constructive of every single player. I just am. I remember, listen, when, when the Raptors were on their pace to win this championship a couple years ago, I was live streaming the games, live reactions, and I was damn near brought to tears when they won it because Kyle Lowry finally won a championship. So I know the newer fans don't know that, and they may interpret that as me being hater, a hater. But my real question to y'all is, how can somebody see constructive criticism and take it as hatred. And even if it was hatred, right? Because some people on Twitter are clown and Pascal, whatever. Why would it matter to you? Why does it matter to you? And that is a genuine question. For example, when the Bulls lost the other day where Zach Levine put up basically 50 against the Clippers and we took an L, people were clowning the Bulls, but it literally didn't matter to me because it just doesn't matter at the end of the day, right? When when your team is, the team is down bad, 
there are going to be people that criticize it. It's the same way with any profession in the world that is on the higher pedestal. When when your favorite artist flops, you're going to get people talking about your favorite artist flopping, even if you really enjoyed the project. It's just the way social media really works. So if you know in your heart that Pascal has been really good because today he had a triple-double, the last game, even with the spinning shot that didn't go down, he was really good. Even the game before that, he was really good. If you know that in your heart, why does it matter what one random person on Twitter has to say about him? That is a genuine question that I, will, I, will, I want to know the answer to because as of right now, I can't relate to feeling some type of way about someone else's opinion about my favorite team or my favorite player. Let me know in the comment section. Um... Again, this is a good game for Pascal Siakam. It's his first ever triple-double, but the Raptors lose this game because they had like a three-minute stretch where they couldn't score. And guess what? Who was scoring? Uh, Melo. Shout out to Melo for a couple big shots and a couple great defensive possessions. Uh, Damian Lillard, of course, and then CJ being as smooth, calm, and collected as can be. They get that rebound with like 17 seconds to go. He just goes coast-to-coast coast to a spin layup or a spin jump shot, and it was so smooth. You know, that's a big win for the Portland Trailblazers, especially considering Yusuf Nurkic were down with a quad injury that we don't know uh, where it's coming from or what it's going to turn into. So to be down, I think they were down by double digits at one point. To come back in the fourth quarter and get that win is great. And the Raptors have to find a way to get their offense more fluid when they are down in these slumps. Wow. Did I just spend six minutes on that? I sure did, but I had to get that off my chest because... It's just so weird. All right, let's talk about the Suns basically just coming out and not doing a thing. Um, I don't want to say this is what the Suns is, um, but some teams, when teams transition from being a bad team to a good team, some of those bad habits still stick, right? And what turns a good team to a great team is being able to take care of business when it really matters the most. There's been a few games this season where the – Phoenix Suns come into town, or they, I don't know if they've always been on the road when this happens, where they're going against an inferior team where they should 100% win, and they play down to the competition, right? This was something that happened to us in high school a lot, too, and I don't want to bring high school stories into it, but my coach used to always say, we are better than this team. You guys are playing down to the competition. This is what happened with the Suns today. It happened against the, the Detroit Pistons, and then there was one more game, I think, where they end up losing because they play down to the competition. I have to figure out, or the team has to figure out, how to get DeAndre Aiden to either get it, get more confident or just I don't want to say play harder, but play more aggressive. He is too big to be dominated by Robin Lopez. Shout out to the Washington Wizards for this win, by the way. We knew that Thomas Bryant being out, get, get well soon. It's, it's terrible to have anybody, you know, be out for an entire season. But Robin Lopez is a significantly better defensive player than Thomas Bryant. So today the defense looked way better than it had been with, with uh, Thomas Bryant. So that's a plus. Um, Bradley Beal was calm, cool, collected as well, and they get a, a, a big win. I mean, this is a team that is fun to watch when they are rolling, and today was one of those days. That was Bertans has his first really good game of the season. He shows why he got paid all of that money and, and knocking a lot of shots down. Uh, the Suns have to come out, and Chris Paul has to get that into him because out of all the players on the roster, him, Jay Crowder, um, are the ones that have like that winning DNA that's been in a lot of good winning locker rooms. So they got to get these younger players to really come to play every single night and don't care who the competition is. Let's just go out there and hoop. The Bucks put, put together a crazy fourth quarter against the Magic. And I was really enjoying the Magic game until that point. Um, I had no idea that Mo Bomb was actually getting PT. And then I looked it up. He'd only play a couple, ga a couple games in a couple minutes this season. Um, but what a crazy story Mo Bamba is. You know what I'm saying? I hope he gets, gets better. And I hope he's not. Look, there's a picture of me on the internet somewhere in a Mobama jersey. I hope it doesn't exist, but it happened. I was a big Mobama fan coming out of college, and so far this, in his NBA career, he hasn't really lived up to anything, uh, but the Bucks put it together in this fourth quarter. Gordo, Gordon Hayward, 34 points. I mean, in the first half, he had like 28, so in the second half, he didn't do much. But this is what I was saying when the season was starting. The, the Hornets are fun. I knew they were going to be fun going into things. And this is the fourth game in a row I think they won where they play really well. Um, this was a game that LaMelo Ball didn't shoot the ball at all well, but everything else about his game was amazing. Him and Vontae did not have good games, and somehow they end up winning it. With him and Vontae not having good games shooting-wise, they definitely know how to play make, and they definitely had to know how to do the surrounding things. Defensively, I don't know if the numbers back me up on this, but they haven't looked terrible when it was like LaMelo Ball, um, when they run that three-guard ball, the three guard lineup of LaMelo Ball, Terry Rozier, and Devontae Graham. And maybe the numbers don't back me up on that, but the eye test is telling me that it didn't look bad, at least in this game, um, when they're all playing together. Shout out to P.J. Washington slowly getting back to last year form. I, I know he didn't shoot the ball well, but he started off really, really good. In um, the last game I want to talk about, which, which game? Oh, is that all of them? 
I mean, Philly, let's be honest, Philly shouldn't be playing either. Um, just like how the other games got postponed, the Phillies just caught two L's at the expense of the NBA because they, they don't have a complete team. They honestly don't have a complete team. Oh, um, the Knicks lost this one, and this is a third game in a row where the Knicks couldn't even crack 90 points. Are they coming back down to earth? I don't I don't really know, but it, it's kind of looking like that. Um, to not be able to put up 90 points on three straight games is is a bit scary, when you, especially when you consider who their competition has been over the, those course that course of uh, time. So, you know, um, I, I feel like RJ, we know RJ as a slasher, obviously. That's what he does best. But he needs to somehow get a, a jump shot, too, because it just makes things harder for players like Julius Randle, who's their best player at this point, because teams don't even guard RJ out there. And they allow him. They, he doesn't get enough time to get that full head of steam to get to the basket anymore. So they, they got to figure that out and get his jump shot right or just surround him with four other shooters. But I don't even know if – how about I just get my guard to shoot the ball well? You know what I'm saying? And he's only into year number two, and I'm sure it'll come around eventually. It's not like his jump shot looks bad or anything. It just doesn't really go down. And the last game, this is the last game, the Kings reel me back in. Every time I'm, I'm ready to stop watching the Kings, they do it. And Harrison Barnes shows the veteran leadership and put up 30. Darren Fox, big game. Um, I don't really have much to say about the Indiana Pacers in this L. I don't know how you let the have Doug McDermott puts up 20 and you still catch an L is, is rough. Um, but this was a good game, a good team game where everything was rolling for for the Kings and they almost blew it. Uh, they almost showed their age there, but they weren't able to put it together. The Air Fox big slam at the end, and that was it. I think that's the end of my episode. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. And please, I will be scouring through the comment sections. I'm, I'm genuinely curious about all those things. I literally have a goddamn Pascal Siakam shirt. How many people have a knockoff Pascal Siakam shirt? Please tell me. Love y'all. Call game.